Forbes Uber one rental at a time. It is Sunday, July 31st. And look who wanted to be on camera today. So folks, if you don't know something that I have in my office every morning, whether we're doing the daily financial news or interviewing experts are my lovely Shih Tzu puppies. Fun thing about July 31st, this little guy right here, his name is Sonny. He is one years old today. Yes, folks, Sonny is one year old today. This is Happy. Happy's a little bit older. She's about 13 months or so. So again, they wanted to say hi. Say hi, YouTube world. All right, you guys want to go play? Okay, go play. There you go. All right, hopefully you enjoyed that. Again, the blonde is happy. The darker color is sunny. So July 31st, Sunday, July 31st, lots of stuff going on. First, let me apologize. Yes, folks, I have to apologize. We did an amazing deep dive session yesterday on pre-foreclosures. We had many people join. Unfortunately, one of my invites that I sent out actually had the incorrect time zone. So a couple of you, unfortunately, tried to join at 1 Pacific when it was going on at 9 a.m. Don't worry. Don't fret. It is going live today at 9 a.m. You will see 90 minutes of Q&A, how to do it, how to attack it, how to have conversations, be able to rewatch it, all of that good stuff. Um, I don't know. Time zone. Technology challenged. 100% my error. Not sure how it happened, but now I know to double check time zones because 9 a.m. here, not 9 a.m. there. It's a whole thing. I apologize, me to you, but it will go live at 9 a.m. today for the entire world to see. Shout out, Ty. Shout out, Ulysses, for giving us 90 minutes on your Saturday. Next up, we are doing ADUs, accessory dwelling units, next Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific. I will again check the uh, time zone this time so I don't mess it up. Again, 9 a.m. this Saturday. Is it a way to make a ton of money? Is it a way to get frustrated and spend a lot of money? I don't know. Right now, I'm doing it wrong. I'm losing money. I'm frustrated. But we've got that ADU guy coming on for 90 minutes next Saturday. He is experienced. He has done it. He is helping people across the country. So we are going to talk ADUs next Saturday. If you want to be a part of the live mastermind, 90 minutes, you must buy the course. Uh, you can join the Facebook group, get the invite there. Or on Teachable, flip the little flag that says, yes, you want to receive emails from me, and you will get the invite this week. Next, we got a whole bunch of earnings next week. Not quite the fang names of last week, right? Apple, Amazon, Meta, Google, all those guys. Uh, but yet, still some very important numbers. On Monday, we have uh, Amazon, I'm sorry, Activision, Activision, and Pinterest. Tuesday, AMD, Uber, Airbnb, Starbucks, PayPal. Wednesday, Robinhood, CVS, Clorox, Royal Caribbean. Thursday, AMC, DoorDash, Lyft. When I look at this list, I want to know what's going on with Airbnb, right? I, I'm interested. I, I'm. It feels like this is going to be kind of like the last great summer for Airbnb. We'll see. I want to hear from Starbucks. Again, remember Starbucks, for all the companies that reported, Starbucks, to me, in my opinion, gave us the first hint that China was in trouble. You can go back to Starbucks, what would it have been? Their Q4 earnings, possibly even their Q3 earnings. And they told us the Chinese consumer is slowing down. It seems like yesterday that Starbucks gave us the indication. Fast forward to today, China could be in a recession, folks. Yes, we're not talking 3 4 5% positive growth. We're talking negative 1, negative 2. They have a technology sector that's down. They have consumers that are down. They have a housing market. It's crashing all over the place. So again, Starbucks gave us insight into China. Might Starbucks give us the first indication that there's a bottom? Maybe. I look forward to seeing their earnings next week. Next up, we have two months, two months to the next Fed meeting. 
I think this is going to be two months of bad news is good news and good news is bad news. Let me explain. Right now, the smart money, the bond market that is 40 times the stock market is telling us, it's telling us pretty loudly, a recession is near, if not started, and the Fed will pause and pivot sooner than they think. That's what the bond market is telling us. So if that is the thesis, what does it mean that bad news is good news and good news is bad news? Well, here we go. We are going to get a jobs number on Friday. If we get a good jobs number, say plus 400,000, that is bad news for rates. That is bad news for the bond market because it means they're wrong. Now, if on Friday we get a bad jobs number, say sub 200, again, still positive, but you can clearly see the trend down. That will be bad news, but good news. You feel me? You, you get what we're doing here? Then later in the month, we will get CPI. I think it's the second week of August for July. Again, 9-1 was the previous month. Good news, CPI comes down to, say, pick a number, 8-6. I'm making it up. Normally, that would be good news. What will happen to rates? Is it bad news? Is it not enough? What is going on? What happens if it's bad news? It goes up. Then what happens to rates? This whole good news, bad news thing, I think we are in a very weird, weird time. And again, I want to be very clear. Powell disappointed me. I asked Powell to be a big old hawk with nasty talons and a, a firm beak. And he came out with a big, cute, fuzzy dove. I suspect Jerome Powell is pissed off that the stock market is up 4%, that rates are down. Mortgage rates are headed down. I'm getting emails this weekend. Some of you are getting 30-year money with a 4 on it. A four. Now, granted, it's high fours, but damn, high fours is a lot better than mid sixes. And again, remember, in the housing market, I talk affordability. It was really, really bad. Legendary bad at 6%. It's still bad at 4.9, but it's not as bad as at 6. Price, rate, Income. It is the combination of those three things that make up affordability. And trust me, a 1% drop in 30 year money makes housing more affordable. It just does. It's simple math. Some of you are asking how long this might take. No idea. I have no idea how you can raise the funds rate 1.5%. You, we doubled. More than doubled the funds rate in, in, what do you want to call it, 45 days? And 30-year mortgage rates went down. I would not have guessed that. I would not have bet on that. It is a really, really weird time. But if you are in the housing market, today you could get, uh, you could offer below list price. You could ask for closing costs. You could get rate buy down and you get a point off your interest rate because the Fed and the bond market have a disagreement. Hey, at the end of the day, I would not have guessed this, but who cares? Take advantage of it if you can, if you are in this situation and you want to. It is, uh, I would say it's illogical, but who cares? Who cares? Take it, take it. You want it? Take it. It's pretty crazy. Three tips for a side hustle. There was uh, read an article on CNBC Make It. CNBC Make It series does a great job of highlighting Gen Z and millennials who have taken the time to generate side hustles, many of them making it their permanent business at some point. I read an article highlighting three skills for any of us. If you wanted to start a side hustle, if you wanted to add extra income, these are things to think about. One, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Think about selling 
a skill or experience that you already have. Don't front. Don't try to make something up. What have I always said? If you have a hobby or passion that, you know, like if you're a, if you're a Gen X or baby boomer, for example, and you have had a hobby or passion for decades, trust me when I say there is a way that you can monetize that. If you have done model cars or you have baked artisan bread or you have fixed old Mustangs or whatever it is, if you have decades of experience, decades of stories, there are ways that you can monetize it. If you have a skill in writing or technology or uh, any of these things, you can go to upstart or marketing, whatever. There's lots of ways that you can monetize that skill or habit or experience. Again, sell an existing skill is tip number one. Tip number two, again, don't overthink it. If you want to go in and start a channel or do some coaching about how to fix old Mustangs, research others that are fixing cars and things of that nature. Know what's working, know what's not. Don't You don't have to create something from scratch. There are already content creators in your space. Follow what they do. And number three, diversify your income. For me, for example, if one rental at a time, I started from nowhere. I wrote a book. That book led to this channel. This channel led to creating a course. This course led to writing, or this channel led to writing a second book. There are just ways that you can, you know, add additional streams of income around your set or experience. Think about it. Brainstorm. Get after it. There are ways that you can produce an extra thousand dollars a month. It takes time. It takes energy. But again, if you're trying to monetize your decades of experience or hobby, it's fun. I have fun every day talking to you. And I'm here sitting talking to you on my phone. So again, give it a shot. Housing market. This stands for good and the bad. Oh, I'm fighting off a I'm fighting off a sneeze. Here we go. So I want to be very clear. The housing market is messy. We talked about this yesterday on my live stream. There are bad things and good things. Are you a glass half full? Are you a glass half empty? What is what is it? I want to just give you both sides. For example, if you are a listing agent, listing agent. Good news. You're going to get a lot more listings. Good news, well-priced homes still sell. Well-priced homes still sell. See June data for lowest days on market, I think it was 14 days. Well-priced homes still sell. Number three, some people need to sell. Help them. Well, what's the bad news for listing agent? There's going to be a lot of wish pricing and junk listings. Two, People are going to waste your time if you let them. Next, you your clients may have unrealistic expectations and frankly, yell at you a lot if you take their listing. That's on you. All right, how about a buyer's agent? Let's talk about the bad news. People are going to cancel. We are talking about a recession. We are getting layoffs. We are getting unaffordability. Some people will cancel because they're scared and some will cancel because they can't get a yes answer from a bank. People will, you can, uh, you're going to have to negotiate hard, right? You're going to have to, you should negotiate hard. Um, and again, you may get lacks of a commitment. On the good side, right now, based on last quarter's data, first time homeowners have a leg up. First time homeowners, as I recall, the NAR data was up to 30% after bottoming at 23. I believe FHA, VA, 203K loans, it is their time. If you are a buyer's agent that is focused on first time buyers, you have a fighting chance. For two years, your FHA buyer's offer was ignored no longer. Let's talk about investors, people that follow me, one rental at a time. Bad news, lots of wish pricing. Your buy box, what I teach, rule number one, your buy box has more data in it 
than any time you have been doing this. Some of those listings are going to expire or be canceled. You don't know which ones, but trust me, they will. There's going to be want to sell and need to sell. Right now, in most markets, it's hard to determine which is which. Over time, good news, need to sell will scream. They'll have multiple price drops. You will see the description change. You will see days on market go to 45, 50, 60 days. It is coming. Bad news, you may have to write lots of offers. Good news, you are going to get more counters. Bad news, you're going to ask for lots of extra things. Good news, you can ask for lots of extra things. So again, remember, good news or bad news, what do you want to believe? If you want to sit there and say housing isn't affordable or I can't do this or I can't do that, congratulations, you're right. If you want to sit there and go, you know what? I know there's a great deal out there somewhere and I'm going to look for it. Great news. You're right. Which one do you want to do? All right. So a couple other things I noted. Uh, The tech industry, as of the end of July, has had 30,000 layoffs already in the first six months. That's about 5,000 a month. Uh, There are more coming without question. Uh, There's a lot of battle between a Fed pause and a Fed rate cut. I think this is the great dynamic that will play out over the next two months. Good news, bad news. I do think Powell is pissed off that the stock market is up and rates are down. If If Powell wanted to fix that, he could come out next week or the week after and bam, hit the market with a surprise rate hike. Again, Powell, I believe... This is on you. Powell, if you're pissed off, own that stuff. You had the Q&A and you were not a hawk. You were a dove. Powell, go back and listen to your answers. You want to know why the market is up and rates are down? It's because of your answers. You did that. What else do I got? Let me see. Oh, let's do this. Five most livable cities in the world. Shockingly, none of them are in the United States. Number five, Vancouver, Canada. Number two, number four, Calgary, Canada. Number three, Zurich, Switzerland. Number two, Copenhagen, Denmark. And number one, Vienna, Austria. Have I been to all five of these cities? I have. I have been to all five of these cities. They are all wonderful places to be. Great architecture, great people. I had a blast in all five. I've been to most of these more than once. Yep. At the end, folks, it is Sunday, July 31st. One more time, I apologize for the time zone pre-foreclosure error. I will do better. Let's congratulate. We got people still doing deals. We got deals, deals, deals. If you want to get one of these, all you have to do is close on a rental or your house. I'm an easy grader. Let me know. Give me your address and I can mail these to you. So, Michael, congratulations on your home. Congratulations on your units. Yes, folks, Michael got two. And hint, these were seller finance deals, Michael. Congratulations. Good for you. Your cards will be in the mail today. All right, folks, take care of yourself. It is Sunday, July 31st. It is the end of the month. We start a brand new month tomorrow. If you are looking to make a change in your financial situation via Real estate, I suggest buying the course, How to Get Started One Rental at a Time, 320 bucks. How did I do it? All in the course, all the bonus sections. Now we're doing we're doing Zoom masterminds a couple of times a month, 90 minutes with experts. You get access to the private Facebook group with thousands of other people. It's ridiculously cheap, but I understand if you don't have the money, just keep watching YouTube. We will keep up with the daily content. Bye-bye.